Hi, John Veely, CEO of Online Visas, here with another episode of Immigration Solutions during the coronavirus. I hope you're doing well. Uh, it's a beautiful spring day here in early May in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, some places are opening, some are still sheltering in place. Hope you're doing well in your world. Uh, today's an interesting show. Uh, I've had some clients that have asked me, um, what do they have to pay the PPP loan back? Um, so this all came out um, that certain companies uh, had used the small business loan, uh, the uh, PPP uh, issued by the SBA to, uh, to get money during uh, the pandemic. We heard uh, Ruth Chris Stakes, Shake Shack, even the LA Lakers, right? The LA Lakers with, uh, I don't know, a $4 billion uh, you know, entity um, received money to make payroll. And so uh, there has been a big pushback. And what happened um, is that on May 5th, the uh, um, Paycheck Protection Program loans issued a FAQ. Okay, an FAQ. So uh, a lot of people had already um, had already received their, these monies, and so new laws, new rules came out about the PPP, and it is scaring people to death. Um, initially, um, the first thing, hey Arnold Sabanda, good to see you out there. Initially, and Kelly Thompson, good to see you. Initially, the um, uh, the, the purpose of the PPP um, was quite simply that the United States government was giving money to companies so that they would stay open because it makes a lot of sense for the companies to pe keep their employees um, employed, then going on welfare and the companies dying, right? That was the purpose. But because some people abused that, they're now scaring folks to have to give back that money. And they gave initially a date of May 7th. Um, a, uh, a safe harbor. If you give the money back by May 7th, you won't be punished. And, and the punishment is, is, it could be criminal. It could be jail time if you don't do it. So um, where does this all exist, right? Uh, first thing I, I asked my clients is, did they send you a letter? No, no, we didn't get a letter. Well, where'd you see it? Well, I did some digging and I found out that it's in um, footnote or I'm sorry, FAQ 31. Don't you like that? They've buried this regulation on whether you should pay the government back the loan that they gave you to keep them alive in frequently asked question number 31. So let's, let's dig into FAQ 31 if we can and see what that says. So Going to um, this, and if you need a copy of this, hi, Vicki Jansing. Um, what we're talking about is um, the PPP plan, and do you have to pay the money back now that the government has started initiating, I don't know if you'd even call them new rules, a frequently asked question number 31, which has people scared. So the question itself uh, isn't that scary. It's what the analysis of the experts are saying about it and, and talking to their clients. So Frequently asked question 31 on the PPP plan is do businesses owned by large companies with adequate sources of liquidity to support the business's ongoing operations qualify for a PPP loan? Okay, so if you're thinking I'm not a big company, um, I should be fine, right? Those, it's, it's, a, um, it's large companies with adequate sources of liquidity. Well, what if you're not a large company, but you have adequate sources of liquidity? What does that mean? Does it mean your assets? Does it mean you could have done another loan? Um, that you should have done another loan and not taking this one? Will they, will they throw you in jail or will they just make you pay this loan back? Because the attractive thing about the loan was that if you took it off to make payroll, they would then, um, you know, forgive it, right? I mean, taking a loan out, hi, Anna. Uh, more good to see you. And Jason Russell, great to see you, my friend. Jason Russell, the real right hand of what's going on here at, at Veeley Law is tuning in. So this is about the PPP loan and whether or not foot, footnote 31 means that you have to pay it back. Okay, so here's their answer to whether do businesses owned by large companies with adequate sources of liquidity to support the business's ongoing operations qualify for a PPP loan? Or in other words, do you have to pay it back by what's now May 14th or go to jail or have to uh, not have your loan forgiven. 
So the answer is, in addition to reviewing applicable affiliation rules to determine eligibility, affiliation rules are uh, if you're affiliated with another company, um, you're, you're a big company, say a franchise, things like that, um, that, that do you count those people towards your 500 people? So in addition to reviewing the applicable affiliation rules to determine eligibility, all borrowers must assess their economic need for PPP loan under the standard established by the CARES Act and the PPP regulation at the time of the loan application. Again, the time of the loan application was before this new rule came out, this new FAQ, but it's saying that all companies, not just large ones with adequate sources of liquidity, but all companies must assess their economic need for a PPP loan. Although the CARES Act suspends the ordinary requirement that borrowers must be unable to obtain credit elsewhere. All right, we're suspending the requirement. Although that we've suspended the requirement that um, borrowers must be unable to obtain credit, like they have bad credit or they can't get any more credit. They're suspending that. That's defined in 3H of the Small Business Act. Borrowers still must certify in good faith that the PPP loan is necessary. Okay. Specifically, before submitting a PPP application, all borrowers should review carefully the required certification, which in quote says, current economic uncertainty make this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operation of the applicant. Okay. That if you got a PPP loan, you would have had to certify um, that, uh, let me read it one more time. Current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing oper operations of the applicant. Borrowers must make this certification in good faith, taking into account their current business activity and their ability to ex asset, ex I'm sorry, ability to access other sources of liquidity, um, sufficient to support their ongoing operations in a matter that is not significantly detrimental to the business. For example, okay, it is unlikely that a public company with substantial market value and access to capital markets will be able to make the required certification in good faith. And such a company should be prepared to demonstrate to SBA upon request its basis for certification. Okay, that's what we all jumped out with and said, you know, you're right about that. A public company that has access to capital markets, that means investors can invest in the stock market, then they shouldn't have gotten this money, right? We all agree with that. But does it stop there, right? And experts are saying it may not, all right? Now, let me see who else is on here. Um, oh, we got that. Okay, so uh, it may not. So let's look at what do the experts say. So I've looked up the CPA journal, right? So if you want more information, I'm not a CPA. I'm not a tax lawyer. I'm a guy that borrowed uh, money for this PPP loan also. And um, I had clients that, are, um, uh, that I help that have asked me, do I need to pay it back? What do I think about it? So that's why I'm writing about it, right? So I'm not more knowledgeable than you are on this. I promise you, you want to talk to a CPA, you want to talk to a tax attorney about this. But the CPA Journal has written some things about this on this issue, right? So what I would have said is, oh, I'm not a large company and um, I don't have adequate uh, sources of liquidity. Now, it could have gotten um, a loan probably. You know, I'm, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, I, I had a loan before. Uh, you know, lines of credit. Do those count? What if I had a line of, line of credit? I don't. But what if I had one? Um, do I need to pay this back right now? So, so let's look at what the CPA Journal says about this. Um, all right. So the first thing they said is the worrying wording of the current economic uncertainty um, certification could have been clearer, right? They're saying, okay, that, that the wording that I read you um, could have been clearer, but those who have become familiar with PPP's rules generally understand it to mean a borrowing a borrower is suffering or will likely suffer meaningful economic hard, uh, harm as a result of the crisis, all right? FAQ 31, that's what I read you, does, does respond to the publicized broad concern of preventing a public company with substantial market value and access to capital markets from assessing PPP loans. But, but for legitimately hurting entities, the FAQ's level of current business activity and sources of liquidity tests are not only worrying, but seem contra contrary to congressional intent, right? So Congre con Congress wanted us to keep our people paid 
They, they weren't asking if we could have borrowed the money someplace else. Matter of fact, that's why they took off uh, that whole requirement that you even go after it or the whole requirement about our, um, uh, you know, whether we are credit worthy. They didn't worry about our credit. They didn't worry about if we borrowed anywhere else. They needed to get us money and they needed to get it quick. And they announced it quickly and the money went away quickly. And then they accessed some more. Now, um, here is um, the SBA asking for it back because a couple of public companies, uh, big money companies, uh, took advantage of it, right? Now, maybe the rest of us are scared or certain us are scared. So here's another thing they said. Do I need to first look for other funds before applying for this program? According to the CPA journal, the answer is no. We are not waiving the SBA requirement that you try to obtain some or all of your loan funds from another source, all right? So did you have to use your line of credit? By this, they're saying no, right? You didn't have to go get a line of credit. I was wondering, do I have to get a line of credit? It's saying I didn't need to go look for that before I did that. Sorry about that. People called in. So I'm, I'm talking about the PPP and whether a company has to pay that back by the new FAQ, the SA, uh, Small Business Administration's new FAQ 31 uh, buried in there um, that you might do it. And I'm, I'm reading from the CPA journal on how they've addressed this. So no, you do not have to look for loans uh, before that. The FAQ does not state that the entity must assess per FAQ 31, the ability to access other sources of liquidity that are not credit elsewhere sources before being PPP eligible. In fact, FAQ 31 requirements seems to like a close cousin to credit elsewhere requirement that the PPP statutory provision expressly set aside for the PPP loan. So they're saying you don't have to have done that. All right. So going forward, this is the thing. The SBA did not say what consequences not returning funds would be, nor did it say how it will enforce the new interpretation or against whom. All right. That's not very clear and that's not very fair, is it, right? So it is one thing to enforce against a major company and institutions have clearly abused the certification and have been listed in that SBA FAQ 31, right? Like you're a public company and you have access to the stock market, then this isn't for you. But uh, we're talking about private companies that don't have that, that might have a line of credit that they didn't use, right? Those are the ones that, that are concerned right now. What should they do? Are they really going to go after them? Um, so, um, so it's one thing about those public companies. Um, anyone who's seen the SBA pursue actions against individuals who personally guarantee defaulted loans knows the agency can be serious. Um, enforcement may be more than turning the proceeds into a two-year loan at 1% interest, and the most egregious cases can result in criminal prosecution. Okay, so entities that have received applied for PPP funds would be wise to conduct an FAQ 31 evaluation. That's what I'm going to do for my company. Um, we're going to do that. So those that are, that are not facing a COVID-19 related revenue downturn should possibly return or decline the funds. Okay, so if your business is still doing great, right? It just didn't go down at all or went up. What the, the CPA journal is saying is give the money back. If that's your case, you don't need it, right? Give the money back. All right. But what if you did, right? So how about entities that do have a material uh, decline and no alternative liquidity sources to meet payroll costs over the eight week uh, period should be fine. Okay. So if you're going down and you didn't have access, um, another alternative, alternative liquidity source. Like I don't have the line of credit right now, right? Could I go get a line of credit? Should I have gotten a line of credit? They're saying you don't have to worry about that, right? So if my business went down and I didn't have a line of credit um, or access to other money, such as assets, right? That's a question. Did I have assets stored up? Another client of mine said, we're going to give it back because we have too many assets, right? We should have spent our assets first, according to that logic is what somebody told them. I don't know that that's the, the truth or not, but if you don't have the assets, if you don't have the line of credit or the loan and you've had a downturn, you should be fine. Okay. So everyone else, those with the line of credit, those with the assets, right, must make a subjective risk-based judgment. The more difficult it is for an entity to afford eight weeks of payroll costs without sacrificing future operations, the more likely the entity can meet the FAQ standards of accepting the PPP loans. All right. You hear that? So the more difficult it is, the, the worse that you're hurting, um, the better for doing that. But I don't think it's just that, right? I'm a lawyer and I deal with the government all the time. 
I've dealt with the government on a lot of different issues. This is the SBA. I've dealt with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. I've dealt with USCIS, Homeland Security, Department of Labor. I, I know how agencies work, right? What this means, button up. This means get your documents together. Make sure that you have a really, really accurate uh, profit and loss statement, right? If you're using QuickBooks, whatever it is, get an accurate profit and loss statement that shows um, how much revenue you're making. Now, pick a date. The date starts on the date that you got the money, okay? And then it goes for six weeks after that. Now, you wanna go before that date so you can show, here's what we were doing before, right? And here's what we're doing now, and it's not as good. And here's some documentary proof of that. Now, what could documentary proof be? Um, how about letters from a client? Client saying, um, we're not going with you right now or we're slowing down our business because of COVID-19. Make sure COVID-19 gets in there if you can, right? Um, so um, that's what we need. Uh, so you wanna, you, wanna, you wanna document this stuff. So letters from contracts, uh, from, from clients, email from clients, proof, communication that business is turning down, not just uh, with the numbers, you need the numbers. Numbers absolutely are there, right? Um, we get a lot of online business, right? We have, you know, we had a thousand to 1200 people uh, coming to our website every single day. That number has dras dropped drastically after COVID-19. Not surprisingly, people know it's hard to get in the United States. So we've seen that downturn in business. We actually track everything. How many people ask questions, right? We have that. Um, how many strategy sessions did we have? How many contracts did we send out? How many clients did we execute? How much money did we make per client? We can, we're, we're gonna show all that if we have to, right? And, and I think we're gonna be fine. We didn't have the line of credit that we didn't use, right? Those that did, those are the sorts of what we call key performance indicators that you may wanna use to prove that your business has suffered or will suffer. Then projections, right? Those are things like that. So, um, so this is what the, um, hi Morgan, good to see you. Um, here's what the CPA journal has said. One answered question is the extent in which business owners out, uh, assets outside the business are other sources of liquidity under FAQ 31. Entity, entities accepting PPP funds would be wise to prepare at least a brief written analysis, possibly including Excel projections covering their reasons for meeting the FAQ 31 test as subjective as an analysis might need to be. One approach is to prepare three scenarios, one best case, one worst case, and one in between for economic recovery and project how using an entity's other source of liquidity would not be, um, would or would not be detrimental to their business, right? So this is the FAQ audit, right? Um, you may check with a CPA on that. If you want to contact us about that, we're going to be doing it. We can help you do that. Um, it's looking at these numbers to put, you know, numbers don't lie is what we always say at our firm, right? I mean, you can say you're working hard, but how much did you do this week versus last week? We're seeing a downturn. I'm not going to go into what those details are, but we're seeing one, right? We could show that with our numbers. We can show that through our revenue, our expenses, um, that sort of thing. Now, remember what this is all about. PPP is essentially about payroll. So we talked about this the other day. It's like, who uh, do you have to um, keep the same employees? Well, sometimes employees leave. Sometimes employees left before, like you're a restaurant or a hotel that just shut down and you can't get them back right? A good friend of mine uh, in Tulsa has a brewery, um, part-time workers, you know, they're not back. Other people might make more money on unemployment. Other people found other jobs, right? All those things happen. So the answer isn't that you have to hire back every single person. You just have to hire back every position, right? And if you don't, that's not um, uh, going to be forgiven. And the amount of that is. Now, remember, they weren't looking at what you did in 2020. They're looking at what you did in 2019 um, to determine what that number was, right? So your 2019 might've been different than your 2020 was in the first few months, right? So it's gonna be, where were you at at that time? And, and do you do this, right? So there are some unanswered questions according to the CPA journal. Um, S SBA FAQ 31, that's a lot of letters, right? Has created new PPP loan qualification standards that were not envisioned until its issuance, right? They created ex post facto law is what that is. And, and, and in the legal world, that's illegal, 
You can't do that. You can't say, okay, here's the money under these rules and create new rules. And that's effectively what they've done. Now, I've read these regulations. They're trying to say it's okay because they're just clarifying some things. And we can understand why, right? People abuse the system. Big public companies went out and snatched millions and millions of dollars. And small companies didn't. And all this, are the small companies going to have to pay for this because of the rules being inflicted on the big companies when they weren't intended to get the money in the first place, right? So... The open questions uh, that seem there, the SBA does not quickly provide a, if the SBA does not quickly provide clarification, many entities with significant COVID-19 revenue losses that receive PPP loans, um, but also have internal or external sources of liquidity may believe they now have to return the funds. Some will send employees about to be paid with PPP funds to states unemployment insurance websites instead an outcome diametrically opposed to the BPP's original intent, right? That's what the SBA is saying, that companies are going to be afraid that they're going to get in trouble. They're going to have to pay for a loan that they know they can't pay um, because they may have had access to a line of credit. They may have had assets. And what they're going to do is give the money back and they're going to fire their employees and they're going to go to the unemployment line. And that's exactly what Congress did not want to do. This is where the administration got in the middle of a congressional intent. Now, as a lawyer, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen, right? Good chance for a lawsuit right there, right? Now, who the hell wants to do that, though, right? Right now, we're trying to stay open. We're trying to get to the next payroll. We're trying to make sure our people have jobs. And this crap is just not good leadership. Just not good leadership whatsoever. That's not what you do. Why the hell are you punishing us right now? I mean, we're trying to stay open right now. You're opening up our, our, our country, and, uh, and what are we supposed to do about it? So I had some thoughts I wanted to go over on that um, that I wrote down here really quickly. Let me just see where I put my handy-dandy handy notes that I just covered up with all of this stuff. Um, but, you know, we are having, um, you know, we're still moving on up in the, uh, in the whole situation of how many people have this virus. Right now, we have 1.17, um, 1,171,000 cases in the United States. We have 62,000 deaths. It's climbing every day. Those are the conservative WHO numbers, not like Johns Hopkins, which are a little bit higher than that. And we've seen uh, the White House has upped up what it thinks is going to happen. Meanwhile, a lot of states have opened, including mine. Last night, uh, my, my wife took the dog, uh, Daisy for a walk and uh, O'Connell's uh, bar in our town was packed and nobody had masks on and nobody cared and, and it's open, right? And so um, I got my haircut done. You're probably thankful for that. That was hurting some eyes with that bush on my head. Um, and, uh, you know, Melissa gave me this mask and I wore this as she cut my hair and um, there was only a couple people in there and you had to stand outside till it was your turn. That was smart, right? They were smart about it. Um, but we talked today at our firm um, about how to open, right? How do we open? We could have stayed open. Um, we we're deemed essential. My wife's company, Pam, she's an essential company. They stayed open. Everybody went to work every day. We, we sent our folks home um, because, you know, ounce of prevention, right? Um, we didn't want to be sick. And I thought for a while my mom might have been sick and I wouldn't do it. But I've been coming up to work. You can see I'm in my office. Uh, and I wouldn't ask anybody on my team to do something I wouldn't do. So, but what we need to talk about is how do we open, right? What are our protocols? How do we deal with this? Now, I'll tell you one prediction I have. Um, when you open it up, more people are going to get sick. It's not an if. If you think it's an if, you're wrong. I mean, you're just straight up wrong. There is going to be a spike in people getting sick when you let us all get back together. And that was always known, right? Because we don't have a vaccine. Uh, we don't really have adequate testing. So that's going to happen. What we, why we did the sheltering in place was to flatten the curve. Remember? We didn't want everybody going to the hospital and, um, you know, overrunning our, uh, our ability, our healthcare uh, uh, system's ability to handle the sick folks, right? So they're saying, okay, we've gone past that. Now, they're making this decision right now not based on the data they said they would make. Understand that. There is too much pressure economically. This is all about money, folks. Too much pressure economically uh, to stay closed. Uh, the government can't have it. That's why they have FAQ 31. Give back the money we gave you if you don't really need it, right? That's what they're saying. And they're, and they're leaving it ambiguous so that you'll accidentally or out of fear give that money back, right? That's what they want to do. Hey, if you don't give the money back, you might go to jail. 
you don't give the money back, you're going to have to pay it back. You're not going to have it um, uh, forgiven for you, right? No, that's not done by mistake. I promise you. Not done by mistake. I've dealt with the government a long time. They leave it out there. They let the CPA journal and the other experts give conservative advice to their clients. Um, yeah, the, 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 the statement itself says which big companies with access to, to the stock market need to do it. But what, wink, wink, what we really mean is if you don't give your money back too, that you may go to jail or have to pay this money back and not be forgiven, right? So people will give that money back. It's all about money right now. Um, and we're weighing that. And some of the reasons about money is a good reason, right? We don't want, do not want our economy to topple. We do not want a depression. That creates a whole nother level, a whole nother level of problems, right? It creates a whole nother level of death, right? People that are, are dispossessed of their place to live and have to be homeless are going to die at a higher rate than people that live in their homes, right? People that can't afford food are going to die of starvation. Um, people that can't afford other things, uh, healthcare, things like that are going to die, right? That would happen. That, that's just a reality. So, so what they're doing is saying we're going to open back up despite the fact our federal rules say that we should have a declining death rate um, for 14 straight days before we do it because we haven't. We go up every single day. Yesterday, we had less cases than we did today, and tomorrow we'll have more cases than we did yesterday, and yet we're still opening right? That is going to happen. So our new reality, as we've used so many times, is going to be how do we exist in a world that is open with the coronavirus, right? So do we wear masks at work every day? That's probably not a bad idea, is it, right? That's the simplest thing. So what we're talking about, do we bring in gloves, right? Do we act like a medical facility here? Do we have masks on everybody? Do we have uh, sanitizer, uh, hand sanitizer, lots of soap and water, uh, maybe a, a mandatory deal, go wash your hands every hour? Um, do we pay a little bit extra for um, uh, cleaning people to come in and sanitize things on a daily basis? All those are good ideas, right? That's what I've opened to my team. I, uh, the way I run my company is I don't just make mandates. Um, you know, we all have to live here. We all have to work here. And, and um, uh, my team is going to throw out ideas, right? We've, we started it this morning. When are we going to open? Um, and how are we going to open? And what are the rules going to be? So those are the things that I've been talking about. So th that's your immigration points. Uh, really, it's the PPP. That's open for everybody, not just immigrants, right? So immigrants are impacted. A lot of immigrant clients that own businesses. Um, got a call from two of them last night, two wonderful guys uh, that I met through IT Serve Alliance uh, that run nice companies that are doing, doing well historically, have needed the PPP money to continue on, and they're afraid that because they had lines of credit, they need to pay their money back. Um, do they or don't they? And, and the answer is you need to do an audit. You know, you need to do an audit and you need to button it up and, and make a decision um, on whether or not you think that's there. And, and if you make the uh, whatever decision you're going to make, if the United States later does it, are you willing to take them on and say, look, uh, I, I need to, uh, um, you know, not just accept, you know, your, you know, ex post facto rule um, that I have to pay this back when that, I didn't, you know, I didn't break any laws or rules applying for this money because the purpose of what Congress gave it to us was to pay our people. And we did. That's what we used it for. Right. Um, so an audit's important on that. Now, I want to change because uh, I always talk about something a little bit lighter. Um, Korean baseball. Anybody seen Korean baseball yet? Um, we are so starved for sports right now. I think it consists of watching NBA players play um, for their NBA teams on video games. But we've evolved a little bit. Baseball exists in Korea. Um, my new favorite team are the Dinos. The Dinos are my favorite Korean baseball team. I don't know any of their players' names. Um, I know that their away uniforms look to be a grayish light blue, at least in the game they played yesterday. And they're playing in stadiums that don't have people. But the Koreans are kind of funny. You know, they filled it with cutouts. They have cut out people um, in the stands um, that, that, uh, that they have out there. And then the, uh, the umpires had masks on their face and, and it was good stuff. So the Dinos, or, or is it the Dinos? I think it's the Dinos. I think Fred Flintstone's uh, pet dinosaur was named Dino, like Dean Martin. He was also called Dino. But the dinos, I think, are the, are the game. Now, who knows how it's really pronounced in Korea. That's what it looks like. But the dinos, and it, and it uh, dawned on me, how come more teams are not named after dinosaurs? There's no T-Rexes, right? There are no uh, Apatosauruses. 
There are no stegosauruses, right? There's some great names for dinosaurs that don't exist in any of our, in any of our team names. And what's really funny is that dinosaurs were all over the United States, right? A lot more dinosaurs were here than tigers or lions, right? We got bears, right? Um, we got ducks. Those are some of the names that exist. But, uh, but we don't have tigers. We don't have lions. Yet we, we have names of those animals. But no, no real dinosaurs, with one exception, the Toronto uh, raptors, which, if you think about it, was such an opportunity missed. Opportunity missed by Toronto, naming its team the Toronto Raptors. Why are they not the Toronto Sauruses? I mean, it just flows right in it. The Toronto Sauruses. Go Sauruses, right? You could even be the Toronto Saurus Rexes. But to just call them the Raptors, when Sauruses was right there the whole time in the dinosaur lexicon, is just missed. I, that was, I mean... Maybe I should have gone into marketing. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to end it on that. This is John Veely, CEO of Online Visas. Hope you're doing well. If you have questions about the PPP, whether you should be audited, how you want to handle that, uh, private message me. Um, go to our Facebook, or I'm sorry, our YouTube page, like and share this, or email me at j-o-n at veelylaw.com. That's V is in Victor, E-L-I-E. LAW.com or uh, give me a call if you got my number, private message me. Um, love to all. Take care. Enjoy this beautiful spring day. It's May. It could be worse.